Many of us who work with urban trees feel that they have a real importance to the health of our communities. They provide us with shade, wind reduction, noise reduction, and cleaning of the air, and many other benefits which really make our cities livable. But for many cities, the cost of placing trees in cities is prohibitive, and it's generally not considered a priority. As a city forester, I maintain the trees which provide so many benefits to our urban environment. Trees really make our communities much more desirable places to live. However, as a city employee, I'm also acutely aware of the expense in establishing and maintaining city trees. It's these expenses which municipalities constantly struggle with in trying to create and maintain their urban forests. In Ithaca, we've been working on a project here at Cornell We were trying to reduce the cost of planting trees in cities and actually plant more trees to benefit the urban environment. And the way we're doing that is a method which is a very old method called bare root transplanting. Bare root transplanting is taking a tree out of the ground without soil around its roots. One of the major advantages is that we can plant many, many more trees using a bare root method because bare root trees are on the whole cheaper. You don't need heavy machinery to plant bare root trees. We can just pick them up and walk down the street and plant them. So it's a major advantage for cities and at a much reduced cost. Now, the traditional method of planting trees in urban areas is called bald and burlap, B and B, where you have a large soil volume around the root system. And those trees of the size that we're planting weigh anywhere from 100 to 300 pounds. A bald and burlap tree is traditionally dug with a tree spade, a machine that takes off about 90% of the root system in the process of digging that ball of earth with the tree. then has to be put into a burlap lined wire basket and that burlap has to be fastened and the wire basket has to be fastened around the tree. Now you're upwards around several hundred pounds and the cost of moving and shipping that tree rises quite steeply at that point because there's tremendous weight in that ball. Well, let's, let's do the uh, B&B tree first see what it looks like and then we can look at the bare root tree and see uh, what its root system is like and compare the two. Everything about these trees is the same except that they've been dug differently. One of the major advantages of using bare root compared to B&B &B trees is that we get up to 200% more root with a bare root tree compared to a bald and burlap tree. Now the advantage of this should be clear in that with a bigger root system, we have a much better opportunity to get more water and nutrients into that newly transplanted tree.
With all the advantages of using bare root trees, there's one major disadvantage, and that is the roots drying out because we don't have soil around them. And if they dry out, the tree is worthless. We felt that we could solve this problem by using a substance called hydrogel. Hydrogels are inert substances which absorb up to 400 times their weight in water. They're actually used in potting mixes. Some people feel that works well or in other industrial uses. We felt that using them for bare root dipping would be really advantageous if we could get the right grind size and the right adherence. We thought that by dipping the root system into a slurry of hydrogel, we could create a reservoir of water around the roots, keeping them healthy for a length of time until they could be transplanted into the ground. Hydrogels in the nursery trade are used in small tree transplanting or for shipping. So this was nothing new, but what we felt was worth pursuing was to try to use these with big municipal trees. And this was very new. So one of the things we had to work out in that process was the, the grind size, the particle size, if you like, of hydrogel. Because these particles actually swell, absorb water, they don't dissolve. So the larger the particle size, the chunkier the piece of jello-looking hydrogel became. So a coarse grind would fall off the root system, whereas a very fine grind would swell up and adhere really well to all those fine roots, which is what we wanted it to do. And that created a reservoir of water, keeping the roots moist, and keeping the tree healthy for at least a week or 10 days. When doing a large-scale bare root tree planting program, planning before the event is crucial. In Ithaca, a critical part of the success of our bare root tree planting program is the participation of volunteers. A centralized staging area needs to be identified from which volunteers will be coordinated. The volunteers need to be trained in tree planting techniques, and all this has to be done well in advance of picking the trees up. The process of bare root transplanting that we've devised really starts with cooperation with a nursery. And this is really important. We work in partnership with the nursery so that when we go up to dip the trees, the trees will be out of the ground the shortest period of time as possible, preferably less than 24 hours. Nice. Municipalities have to plan to use bare root trees. They have to have an address. We have to know where they're going, what the soil type is, and what the right location will be. So all of that planning goes on before we plant them. The city of Ithaca has a computerized tree inventory. We've identified all the planting sites in the city. We measure several parameters of that site and then match a tree species to the site. We make out these tags before we come to the nursery and then place them on the tree here. So we already know where this particular tree is going. We then get large vats ready with a hydrogel dip, which is basically adding a powdered hydrogel to water and mixing it. And very shortly, it starts to thicken up. Now, what we're looking for is a consistency, something like thick gravy. The barrow trees are immersed in the hydrogel dip, we really look for the consistency that adheres to the roots and gives us that good coverage that we're looking for. The excess is allowed to drop off and then the roots are put directly into large pleated thick plastic bags which will keep the trees in good shape with the hydrogel for seven to ten days. trees 
are then loaded onto a truck, kept cool all during this time, and shipped back to the municipality. And we have up to a week to do the planting. We can get several hundred trees into a truck, which really makes it cost effective from our point of view. One of the major advantages of using bare root compared to B&B &B trees is planting by volunteers. You don't need heavy machinery and a large crew to do the transplanting. A city such as Ithaca might plant 30 bald and burlap trees in one day with a crew and heavy machinery where we could plant twice or three times as many with a volunteer crew using shovels and hands. You're really making a tremendous savings that way, not to mention making everybody feel good about planting the trees in their community. I've been working with the Shade Tree Advisory Committee for the last seven or eight years, doing a lot of bare root tree planting. When you use bare root trees instead of ball and burlap planting, it's a great way for communities to save money and a person even as small as myself can carry a tree. And it's a great way as a volunteer in planting trees to be able to give something back to your community and you can actually see the trees grow that you planted. The first year is critical in establishing urban trees. A couple of important steps that we take are using drip irrigation bags and wood chip mulch. The mulch keeps the ground from drying out around the trees and probably more importantly keeps lawnmowers and string trimmers away. The drip irrigation bags put a measured amount of water directly on the tree's roots over an 8 to 48 hour period. This provides for a deep soaking of the root zone and better establishment of urban trees. In the city of Ithaca, we've been using the bare root transplanting method now for six years and have had great success. We feel really good about the thousand trees we put on the streets, many of which are, are quite large now and really make a change in our environment. The cost is less, we use volunteers, and that really creates a sense of purpose and camaraderie around our urban vegetation. And the result is a much greener, better environment for all people who live in the cities.